Hello everyone, this is Aisha Takesh from Kennesaw State University. In this video, I will briefly summarize the mode ratios of a free vibrating 2 degree of freedom system. You have learned this topic probably in your mechanical vibrations class, and you might also be familiar with this educational setup from your vibrations and control uh, laboratories. So what I did, I designed a 2, two degree of freedom translational system in my lab and the system will not, will not be forced. Instead, I will displace the cards to a displacement, and then I will release the cards. And you will see from here that the sliders, the cards, will be oscillating at their own frequency as expected. For a two degree of freedom translational system, you will see two peaks in the power spectrum associated with each natural frequency. But today the question is, is there any way I can control the frequency of oscillations by adjusting the initial displacement? So what I mean is, if you, instead of randomly displacing the card to a value, can I adjust the initial displacement so that the cards, I can control the frequency of oscillations of the cards as in the second video. So this is like a trick or a magic. So I initially tuned the, uh, this, in the displacements of the cards so that when I displace them, there is only the cards will be just oscillating at one of the natural frequencies. And from the power spectrum, you will just see one peak in the screen, as expected. You probably have downloaded our virtual lab developed in MATLAB Simscape. And from here, I designed exactly the same system or a very similar system. And if you randomly displace the cards, you will see that the cards, each of these sliders will be oscillating at their own frequency. And you can plot the power spectrum from here, and that will show you two peaks, again, associated with each natural frequency. In this example, the natural frequencies will be at 2.3 Hertz and 3.2 Hertz. But once I set the initial displacement to the first mode ratio, in this case, it will be negative one, then the cards will start oscillating at only one frequency, one of these initial uh, uh, natural frequencies. So here it will be 3.2 Hertz. And similarly, if I set it to the second mode ratio, which was one, because I designed a symmetrical system, then from here, you will only see one peak in the power spectrum, although the system is two degree of freedom and you expect two peaks. So what is the theory behind this? Let's look at it all together. I will continue with my notes. I designed the same system in my notes, so that you can consider this as a sketch of your system. And let's call the first mass as M1, the second mass as M2, the first spring K1 in between K2, and then the last spring as K3. And assuming also the second card displacement is measured by X2, and the first card displacement is measured one by x1. So this is a multi-degree of freedom system. For two degree of freedom system, you, you need two equations representing the motion of the system. This card is only moving back and forth, only allowed to move in back and forth because of the mechanical limitations. And the second card is only also allowed to move in one degree of, uh, in one dimensional motion, back and forth. That means I can apply mass matrix method. Here, the inertia forces plus the damping forces plus the spring forces should be equal to, in very general case, must be equal to the applied forces. But in my case, I'm only interested in the natural frequencies. And although the system has some dry kinetic friction here because of the contact forces, um, but we are only interested in natural frequencies, that means I can ignore the damping forces and this system is not forced, so I can ignore the, f uh, the external forces so that the equation will be simplified into inertia plus spring forces must be equal to zero. The mass matrix will be diagonal and the spring, for the spring, uh, I'm sorry, stiffness matrix, you look at M1 and M1 is attached to or connected to two springs, so the sum will be k1 plus k2, and the second mass is connected to two springs, k2 and k3, so you just put the sum in here. In between, you have just one spring, it's negative k2. Again, the system is free, so the right side of the equation must be equal to zero. Remember the, uh, to the, the video, in the, in the physical setup, once you displace the card, 
from a distance, then the cards will just start oscillating and then the amplitude of the displacement gradually uh, decreases and eventually gets back to initial displacement to zero. However, assuming there is no damping force, you expect the card, once it's released from a distance, you expect the card to oscillate at the same amplitude back and forth at the same frequency. So this is my case, and the best representation of the signal will be in the form of some amplitude displacement of the card multiplied by a harmonic function, cosine omega and t minus phi. Here omega n is the natural frequency and phi is the phase difference. And we just write the same equation for x2, which is the second card's displacement. So you need x, the position, plus the acceleration also. So you have to differentiate these terms twice. And there is something really important here. There is a really nice relation. Acceleration and position, they're linearly related. And if you write this as a matrix, so x1 double dot, x2 double dot should be equal to negative omega n squared times position. Remember, this was our mass matrix or mathematical equations. And wherever you see acceleration, you can plug in this equation. Then multiply mass matrix with negative omega n squared. That will give you this last equation here. And we can still further simplify the equation because both of these terms are multiplied by the position. If you factor out by x1 and x2 in here, then I, I just get a product equal to zero. So let me just give you an example. If the product of two terms is equal to zero, then minimum either a should be zero or b should be zero or both of them should be zero. Of course, we expect some motion once we release the cards because the system is also undamped. So x1 and x2 shouldn't be zero, leaving us just one option. This matrix, this two by two matrix must be equal to zero so that the right side of the equation will be zero. When we say this matrix should be zero, we mean that the determinant of this matrix should be equal to zero. So how can we solve the problem? And in this equation, as you see from here, there is no numeric value. This mass one, mass two, K1, K2, and K2, they are all variables. So let me just continue from here with the MATLAB code. We have to, let me also bring my notes, and you need to see this equation, it will help you. So we have to first define mass 1, mass 2, k1, k2, k3, and also omega n. And here, when you design the system, probably just omega n will be your only unknown. Here is my A matrix. So this is how I put the, uh, how I define my A matrix after we define these terms as a symbolic variable. Remember, I was trying to find the determinant of this matrix. So we name it as A. And the determinant of A, let's call it as de determinant of a let's calculate this and from here as you see this is a fourth order polynomial for a two degree of freedom system we are expecting two natural frequencies but mathematically there are four solutions so let's solve this the solution will be this setting this determinant of a equal to zero and solving for omega n yes this is like a long expression here but just to simplify it let's give some examples so for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to design a symmetrical system. Again, only for the simplicity. Here, let's say M1 and M2, they are equal to 2 kg. K1 is equal to K3, so it should be equal to, let's say, 400 newton per meter. Because my mass is very small, I will use a very soft spring in between. Let's just select 200 newton per meter. And from here, Let's just continue. Then we will define our A matrix and the only unknown, the variable should be omega n. Here is our matrix and this is the only uh, unknown in here. Here is A matrix with just omega n. Determinant will be just a fourth order polynomial in the form of omega n. And I'm trying to solve this uh, matrix but here, on purpose, I put double. If you don't put double, you will just see some of the equations in their radical form. 
Mathematically, there are four solutions, but physically we mean that the natural frequency cannot be e cannot be a negative number. So I'm only selecting the positive value. So that let's say the first frequency in radian per second will be 20, and the second frequency will be 14.1421 radian per second. So I was trying to calculate uh, the mod ratios of this system. So there are two frequencies. One of them, in our first case, if omega n is equal to omega n1, and in my second case, let me separate it, in my second case here, if omega n is equal to omega n2, and we're going to go back and plug that into our equation. And we named omega n1, we selected omega n1 and omega n2 from this solution, general solution. Now, how are we going to calculate the mod ratios? Remember how we named x1 and x2. x1 and x2 over the time should be equal to a1 and a2 multiplied by cosine omega n t minus 5. This is also from the previous page. If you plug in omega n, omega n1, wherever you see omega n in the A matrix, you will get to this matrix in here. So you have negative 200, here I'm copying this equation, negative 200, negative 200, and negative 200 multiplied by x1, x2, or instead I can just write this as a1, a2, and cosine omega n t minus y to make this equal to zero the very first equation should be negative 200 a1 negative 200 a2 should be zero and from here negative 200 a1 should be equal to 200 times a2 so that a1 over a2 it should be just equal to negative one remember a1 and a2 they are the displacement or the positions of your cards and similarly, if you plug in omega n2, wherever you see omega n in this matrix, you will get to the second form. Here I have, if I go back, you have 200, negative 200, negative 200, and positive 200 multiplied by a1 and a2, displacement of the cards, multiplied by cosine function. And this should be also equal to zero. My equation from here should be 200 times a1 minus 200 times a2 as equal to zero. And then 200 times a1 should be equal to 200 times a2. So that my second mode ratio will be just equal to positive one. Remember, on purpose, I created a symmetrical system so my first mod ratio is negative one let's call this mod shape or mod ratio or eigen mod ratio so mod ratio one and here is my second mod ratio let me demonstrate this we have a two degree of freedom translational system connected by three springs I have mass 1 connected to k1 then in between we have k2 and here we also have k3 assume that let me copy ex exactly the same sketch for the second representation for the second mod and let me put it here. If I displace to be able to make the adjustment to negative one, assume that I displaced the first card to the right by three centimeters. And I'm going to displace the second card to the same displacement, but in opposite direction. So towards each other. So that x1 is positive three centimeter divided by x2 initial which is negative 3 centimeter that gives you negative 1 and in my second case let's say 
I will move the first card to positive 2 centimeter and the second card also to the same displacement in the same direction so that the mod ratio, the ratio of the initial displacement should be equal to 1. If you displace the card to the same displacement in opposite directions, both of the cards will start oscillating at the same frequency, but this frequency will be omega and 1. And if you displace the card to the same displacement in the same direction, then both of the cards will start oscillating at the second frequency. And this is the summary of mod ratios. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to demonstrate this phenomena, this theory in our virtual lab, please watch the next video. And thank you very much.